Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bajin Bay. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about rotation, what's getting rotated, what rotation means, and how it's going to affect the game. Uh, if you're not familiar with rotation, basically what that means is that some parts, some pieces of the game, some cards are going to be moved out of play. Uh, generally, it's into another format. So Legends of Runeterra is going to be split into two formats. It's going to be, I believe, called like a standard format. Uh, and then what's called Eternal. So the Eternal format is where every single card is going to be. And the standard format is going to be um, <clears throat> all of the cards minus a curated list of cards that's going to be rotated into only Eternal. What this allows the game creators to do, Riot, is it allows them to buff cards in Eternal uh, cards that were previously nerfed, maybe they were a little too strong. I'm thinking cards like, you know, Poppy, right? Where it's just a little too strong for normal play. You can buff these cards and these play styles in an eternal format where things are allowed to be a little bit stronger and you keep standard a little bit less powerful. That way you don't have to constantly power creep every single new hero that comes out. Because otherwise, if you release a champion that's kind of the same as Gwen or maybe in the same regions, but not as strong, you're just always going to play Gwen. Not that Gwen's getting rotated, but that's just my example, right? Um, so rotation tends to be very, very healthy for games. I played a lot of card games. Rotation has just about always been a very positive thing for the game. And I'm honestly really excited to see it come to Runeterra. This is a really, really big shakeup for us. I'm not gonna go over every single card that's gonna be rotated. We're gonna be focusing on the champions today and then just kind of what you can expect to change as a whole. Uh, the reason I'm not going every single card because it's a very long <laughs> list. As you can see, there's a lot of cards here. A ton, a ton of cards are getting rotated. We're gonna focus on the champions today. The cards being rotated, uh, the champions being rotated are as follows. We have Anivia, Aphelios, Braum, Draven, Elise, Ezreal, Fiora, Gangplank, Hecarim, Aurelia, Katarina, Kindred, Lee Sin, Lulu, Lux, Poppy, Rumble, Sivir, Soraka, Tom Kench, Tarek, Thresh, Trundle, Twisted Fate, Vi, Victor, Vladimir, Zareth, Yasuo, Ziggs, Zillion, and unfortunately Zoe. Uh, both me and Sunny a bit broken up about that one. But those are all the champions that are going rotated. Quite a large list. And something that uh, stood out to me pretty much immediately is that a lot of these champions are champions that have been seeing play for a really long time or possibly are things that are what I would consider have really, really strong effects, right? Um, this would be things like Ezreal, uh, Zoe, Ophelios, right? These are champions that like do very, very, very powerful things. And all other champions that are being introduced into their regions and stuff have to be able to keep up. They have to be able to do stuff better than Zoe or Ophelios and Targon, which is really tough because they're such flexible, strong champions. You move them to an eternal format and things can get a little bit stronger. You could pick specifically what you need for a deck. They could be a little bit more hyper-focused. You don't have to just play three Zoe in your Targon deck because she's so strong. It's a little bit different. Um, what I would expect to see with the change from standard to eternal is I would expect stats to matter a little bit more. Uh, I know we're getting into a little bit more strategy and maybe you weren't expecting that in this video, but I think it's fun to talk about. Uh, usually when a rotation happens, the things that tend to be better in eternal like formats are uh, cheaper, cheaper things with strong effects. Uh, you may have seen or noticed that in the last couple formats, uh, a lot of stats generally didn't matter unless you're going incredibly wide like Demacia Bannerman. Usually units had to have either in a, in a, a powerful effect or a very strong keyword, think elusive or overwhelm or something like that, right? And now with a lot of these very powerful effects rotating out of standard and into eternal, I would expect stats to matter a little bit more. A 4-4 four, four on 3 is just going to be a really, really good unit. <laughs> likely, right? It, it, it is more likely that that is going to happen. Um, where you see things like more spell-based decks tend to be stronger in Eternal formats. So Eternal will likely end up being something that I, uh, I enjoy a little bit more than Standard, but we'll see. It's been different in the past. Another thing that I expect to be... Um, to happen is I expect the game to slow down 
Uh, usually eternal formats they tend to be faster the power level is higher it is quicker games there's a little bit more blowouts and things like that uh, as standard tends to be it slows the game down a little bit you don't have quite as incredibly powerful things right you don't you're not going to have Lee Sin ending the game on turn six or seven uh, you're not going to be poppy rallying people Fiora is not going to just end the game with her alternate win con right and that's going to happen I'm very excited uh, but honestly the part that I'm most excited for this is my favorite part of rotation is that you get to shine the light on cards that didn't currently see play right like elise is currently getting rotated we're going to use her as an example elise is the de facto aggro and control champion in shadow isles if you have a champion that you need to play for shadow isles you play them if you don't have another champion that you need to play you just play elise because she's so so good she's almost like a really really strong follower Right, she's just a 2-3 fearsome on 2, which is very powerful, that makes a 1-1 one, one every single time she attacks. Very strong. It's good for going wide because you get these, you know, you get to like, well, it's good for aggro because you get to go wide. Um, your opponent has to deal with it or there's going to be more bodies on the board. And it's good for control because she generally gets to get in and then it makes more bodies to block with. Just an inherently incredibly strong champion. What if there's something else in Shadow Isles that we've been missing because you just auto default to Elise every single time, right? It was the same with Draven when he was a 3-3. You're never going to play anything else in Noxus besides Draven because he was so, so good. They nerfed him. Now he gets to come back to Eternal. Uh, and I just think, I think that's really fun where you get to look through old cards and now new ones and go, oh, okay, well, this never really saw play because of this, but now that that's not here, what if it's really good, right? The format's slowing down. So maybe this thing that was kind of just a cute combo uh, is now all of a sudden very, very powerful. I get to take a look at some super fun build around cards that maybe I couldn't have played before. And that's really cool. Uh, the last thing that I want to go over, and this is also very exciting for a lot of people who have had their cards and champions that they loved nerfed. Uh, when you move things to Eternal for this game, they're going to be able to buff them back because the power level is so much higher across the board. Right? Did you Are you a Draven 3-3 lover and are sad that it's a 3-2? Well, I bet you it's going to be a 3-3 again because that's just kind of what you can do. Lee Sin might get unnerfed. Right? Like All these cards that are really powerful they were too powerful for one format now can be kind of let loose a little bit in eternal and i think i think that's so fun i can't wait to play with like high powered of these old decks that we all loved right maybe twisted fate fizz comes back in like all its glory i think like i think that kind of stuff would be fun you get to pit these super super high power level cards against each other uh also you're rotating a lot of these cards that uh take up a lot of the power budget in in a given region i'm going to use vile feast as an example so vile feast in shadow isles is a very potent anti-aggro tool right it drains one and makes a unit to to block with and that is that is such a powerful effect um that while you have it in shadow isles you can't print other things other control tools that are too strong or shadow isles control will never ever ever lose to aggro or a lot of other things. Valfies takes up a very large part of um, Shadow Isles' early interaction power budget. Now, Valfies is rotating out. What are we going to have to fill the gap, right? That's that's interesting. Do we Are we going to have to move into something like Undergrowth? Are we going to have to look for other cards? Are we going to have to get creative? Maybe there's new things that they want to bring in that they find are more interesting or might be just more fresh than Vile Feast. That is, I, I, keep, I keep saying this and that's because I am very excited. That's really exciting to me. I'm just really looking forward to it. This is basically like Legends of the Room Terra 2. And that is just so cool to me. We've been playing this game for so long now. Um, and this is this is the biggest shakeup the game will ever have um, since it was released. This is the biggest change that is that has ever happened to the game, and I just can't wait to dive into it. I am so excited. So uh, I am going to be streaming actually uh, about two hours after this video goes live. Let me streaming on twitch.tv slash Bay L O R. Uh, it's going to be streaming rotation and the new cards that come out because I have early access. Thanks, Riot. And yeah, so come hang out, see what happens, see what changes, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope, I hope you guys are too. See you next time.